Hello everyone, welcome to Ilian and the Magic Box. Today it's a very special day. Today we are celebrating 200 interviews on the show so far. My God, that's amazing. Thank you very much for your support. Thanks to all of you who has been supporting the show so far. It's a bless and I'm so grateful for that. Thank you, thank you very, very much. And to celebrate this special occasion, we are going to have a professional ballroom dancer. Um, he is 19 times national champion. He is 18 time British national champion. He's European and a world champion as well. And his name is Kylie Taylor. Kylie Taylor is from Liverpool in the UK. So let's enjoy the interview. And once again, Thank you very, very much for your support so far. And let's, let's enjoy this beautiful journey called William and the Magic Box. Enjoy the interview. Hello, Kylie. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm very good. How are you, William? Very well. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for accepting my invitation. No problem. My pleasure. Yeah, great. Great. Right, Kylie. So, my God, I have a superstar here on my show. I cannot imagine. My goodness. So, you are 19 times UK national champion. I am, yes. <laughs> 18 times British national champion, European champion, and world champion as well. Yes, I am actually. <laughs> oh, my God. Tell me a little bit about ballroom dance. How it started your career? Well, for me, um, actually, ballroom dancing runs in my family. Um, so my parents were professionals, um, also my auntie. And I also heard, actually, that my great-grandfather, he also had a dance studio, obviously, generations ago. So I guess it's always been in my DNA. Amazing. And when did, when did you start? How old were you when you started dancing? I was uh, four when I, when I took my first kind of steps. And then my first competition, I was actually six. Wow, my God. And uh, you're from Liverpool? I am, yes, yes. Amazing. So tell me something interesting about Liverpool before you start the game. Well, I think the most interesting thing about Liverpool is probably the the generation, the regeneration that's happening. And the, it's just really building very quickly now. It's developing all the time. Um, it's quite an exciting time to be, I think, a, a Liverpoolian. <laughs> Um, it had a lot of money put into it about 10 years ago and they're, they're just really using that in a very positive way and it's attracting uh, especially a lot of young people uh, into the city now, which is great. I see, I, I, I've got a very good friend of mine uh, from Liverpool and uh, <clears throat> I heard that uh, people from Liverpool, they call it Scousers. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kali, so welcome to William and the Magic Box. lovely box full of random fun questions okay so what are we going to do now i'm just gonna play a music just for us to get in the mood before the first question ready yes ready let's do it i hope you like the music let's do it <laughs> okay. yeah <laughs> <laughs> right kali ready for the first question yes i'm ready let's do it so the first question is um what makes you very sentimental um, I think um, family is probably the most important thing to make me sentimental. Um, as a person in general, I, I try not to think too much in the past um, because, of course, you can't change it. Um, so generally, most of the sentimental things happen, of course, in the past. Um, but yeah, a lot of memories with my family members who are you know, not with us anymore. Um, I would definitely say that's number one. Great. Do you have brother and sister as well? I have an older sister, yes. Is she a dancer like you? She is, and she was. Uh, she's retired now from the competitions, but she still teaches. Easy, cool. Let's go for the second question. Ready? Yes. Let's do it. Right, Kylie, just before the next question, tell me um, what's the most challenging part of being a dancer? The most challenging part, I think, um, what I've found over the years is, I mean, you, you of course have setbacks with every sport, um, but I think the biggest challenge is always with yourself and your own positivity, your own mentality. And um, with other sports, you know, you have, for example, a distance or a time or a height that you're trying to achieve. 
Whereas with uh, with dancing, um, you can't always see your own improvement in a, you can't measure your own improvement. So I think sometimes it's very difficult to realize that you are developing and you are improving and you can always just find negatives with yourself and with your performance. So I think this is the biggest challenge to always try to be positive. All right, cool. Next question. Right. Um, what has been the lowest point of your life? Very good question. Um, definitely um, about uh, two years ago, uh, it was. Um, I At the time, I had a very good life. <laughs> I thought everything was in order. Um, and then I, with my relationship that I was in, it, uh, it broke down and um, it definitely affected me much worse than anything I've ever experienced in my life. It was a, a big shock to me. Um, it was out of my control. Um, and yeah, mentally it really affected me a lot. Um, and it did take me actually a long time to, to recover from this. Right. So I, yes, it, this was a difficult time because I was also uh, traveling a lot around the world with my dancing. So um, it was only me and my dance partner and um, I didn't have any friends around me at the time. Right. And uh, yes, that was the lowest point that I can definitely remember. It was a long relationship? Altogether, we were involved for about three years, actually. But okay. um, yeah. Intense. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, Kylie, let's get another question for you. Let's do it. Right, Kylie, just before the next question, tell me, um, what was, tell me a funny story that happened to you on your dance trips around the world, something like that's unforgettable, something funny. Uh, well, to be honest, uh, we, we, there are a lot. Um, and we do a lot of competitions actually in China, usually. Um, and they're a very um, new uh, country when it comes to dance, dance sports. So um, a lot of the competitions they organize are not always organized in the correct way. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I remember uh, not too long ago, actually, we were all collected uh, with this big bus, all of the competitors, and we got on the bus and the driver had no idea where we were going. He didn't know where the competition venue was. <laughs> oh my God. So we were driving through this random city in China um, and we remember very vividly the bus just took a wrong turning and we were actually coming towards oncoming traffic. <laughs> And just like in the movies, the, the bus was, you know, meandering through, through this traffic. And of course, we all thought we were going to die or whatever. So, um, yeah, uh, we got there in the end. But um, just How this late? Kind of How late? Uh, we were, well, in China, there is not always like a, a schedule. <laughs> so <laughs> we arrived when we arrived. All right. <laughs> oh, my God, that's very exciting. <laughs> yes. Okay, Kyle, next question is, um, if you could be any age, what age would you choose and why? To be honest, this is a very interesting question because um, when I was younger, I always would have imagined that I would want to be younger. But uh, now I can honestly say I want to be the age I am at the moment, just because of the experience of life that you have and the, I guess, wisdom that you can have over the years. Um, yes, I really wish that I, when I was younger, I could know what I know now, but that's not possible. So yeah, for sure, I would want to be this age now. Very good, very good. Yeah. Next question, Kylie, let's do it. Have you ever been Brazil, by the way? Have I ever been what, sorry? In Brazil? Uh, no, I haven't been to South America at all, only North America and the Caribbean. But I really, really want to go to uh, South America. I really like reggaeton music, ah. so I definitely would like to uh, visit that area, for sure. Are the Brazilian uh, uh, um, uh, ball, uh, ball dancer, a Brazilian, uh, some um, competition as well, some couples from Brazil or not? There are not so many, actually. Um, <laughs> It, it's strange because you would imagine with the Latin flair that yeah. it would be um, 
But I think sometimes the, the, the technical discipline of our style probably doesn't uh, agree with them, you know, because <laughs> they yeah. prefer to be more free. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right, next question is, um, right, very good one. Send away a message to someone, but you don't need to tell who this message is for. Just the person who is watching the future of this interview will understand this message. <laughs> That's a very interesting question. Um, my message would definitely be um, find what it is you're looking for, find what it is that makes you happy, um, and if you do, I will be very happy. Very good one, very good one. Let's go for another question, Kali. Let's do it. Kali, before the next question, tell me what's the, um, the best and the worst part of living in Liverpool? The uh, worst part um, for me now, I suppose, is that I'm quite isolated from a lot of my friends, actually. Um, a lot of them moved away to different countries or to London and things like this. And um, yeah, also from a dancing point of view now, Liverpool is very quiet. Um, some years ago, there was a lot of dancers all here, but now they've again moved away. So that's mm -hmm. definitely the worst part. Um, but for me, the best part, I mean, I can easily say it's my home. It's where I belong. Um, I just, yeah, I, I feel at home when I'm here. So for me, that's the best reason. Very good. Next question is, what was the biggest punishment have you ever received? Biggest punishment? Ooh. <laughs> um, I can honestly say I don't really misbehave very often <laughs> or I don't get caught. Um, but I think probably actually in school, just a normal kind of detention, you know, when you have to stay behind after school. But that only happened one time in my life. <laughs> right. <laughs> cool. Another question for you. Kali, um, which advice would you give uh, to someone who is starting a career like yours? Uh, what would be your, uh, the biggest advice you'd give to this person? The biggest advice, 100%, would be listen and trust in your coach. Uh, 100%. I can't give any better advice than this. Um, you know, even myself, there were times when I thought, no, what you're saying is not true, um, you know, and I'll do my own thing. And it always turns out that the, the coach was correct in everything that they said. So yeah, trust in your coach and, and believe in them. It's, um, you say about your partner, you all, for example, you always had a partner for a long while. How does it work? You, um, they put you together, you two, how does it work, the, the selection? When you're younger, usually your coaches match you up with someone who they think is suitable, but the older you get, um, you tend to make the decisions yourself. Um, but, you know, I actually dance with a, a girl from Poland, so it's a, an international um, co uh, partnership and that's very, very common as well because you need to match with your height together, your body proportions, your mentality, um, even down to, I guess, your, your goals of what you want to achieve, um, many, many factors. So, and of course, you do need to have quite a good, you know, relationship or friendship with your partner. Absolutely. Okay, Kylie, next question is, um, oh, very good one. If you're not yourself, would you like to be yourself? <laughs> um, I can say yes, I, I would. I, I always try to be a good person, so uh, yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> okay, good one. Another question for Kylie. Uh, by the way, are you enjoying the show so far? I am enjoying it very much, yes. Lots of smiling and laughter, which is the most important thing in life. Great, let's do it, another one. Right, so I'm gonna keep asking a lot of questions because I'm so fascinated with dancer when I was looking at your, your fire, your pictures, like, <laughs> my God, oh my God. Um, tell me, how um, how does work the preparation? Like you train every day, how, how does it work? Um, every couple is a little bit different, you know, with their approach. Um, so I can only really answer for ourselves, but generally we practice every day for sure. Um, but 
we always find as well that very important is to have those days off when you simply don't feel quite right. Okay. Um, because yeah, to kind of rest, the, not, not just your body, but also mentally rest, I think is super, super important as well. Um, but to just always, you know, concentrate on your goals. But um, each Grand Slam throughout the year that we have, um, you need to approach them in a slightly different way, even down to the stamina training. So um, generally about 12 weeks before each of the Grand Slams, that's when we kind of specify our training to suit the competition itself. I see. The Grand Slam is like a, a, some a main, main around the world. Yes, that's correct. Um, the way dancing works and the history of it, all three of the Grand Slams actually are in England. Um, oh, yeah. We, we do have a world championships in which is in different countries and Europeans, mm -hmm. but our three Grand Slams are all in England throughout the year. Oh my God, it's interesting. Oh wow. <laughs> cool. Next question is, um, what is the most memorable lesson you learned from your parents? <laughs> I've learned so many, um, but they told me a story one time, actually, and th th this is connected to dancing, but also to everyday life. Um, they told me a story of uh, a former professional champion who won, won their first Grand Slam. And naturally at the end, they were surrounded by people all, you know, waiting to congratulate them. And um, over the heads of people, they saw one of their closest friends who wasn't a dancer, but just really one of the, and they kind of moved everyone out of the way and went immediately to their friend because that was the person who had supported them all their lives. And uh, that story really meant a lot to me because that's how I try to always live my life. Um, to really stay grounded and down to earth and um, yeah, really remember the people who care about you even before you're successful or whatever. Very good, very good point. Another question, Kylie, let's do I'm it. Ready. Right. Tell me, um, tell me one of your competition that um, you said uh, you when you're dancing, you're like, okay, this is mine, this is going to be mine, and in the end, it didn't happen. And tell me another situation where you're like, okay, I don't think I did well, I don't think it's the first prize is not going to be mine, and at the end of the day, you were the first one. Yeah, um, the second part of that question for sure I can answer because um, one of our grand slams, we have this unique um, thing where each of the final couples, we do like a, a, a small presentation dance where we are the only couple on the floor. Um, so it's a very, very nerve wracking moment. You know, there's thousands of people watching um, and we didn't quite perform it the way we wanted to. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, so we came off the floor and we just thought, this is it, we've, we've blown everything. Um, so we then danced the final and we were so stressed, so angry um, and we got at the time the best result of our lives. Wow! Um, so yeah, that, that for sure I remember very clearly. Um, but to, to actually happen the other way, um, I've when I didn't quite get the result I maybe should have, mm -hmm. I never felt like I danced well. I always. Okay could understand why we got that result, really. You're conscious about it. Yeah, yeah. Great. Next question is, um, if you could make up a school subject, what that would be and why? School subject? Um, I think it would benefit children to learn more about normal everyday life and also more about society. Uh, rather than just specific subjects like maths, geography, whatever. I think to understand actually how humans and people, you know, respond and react to each other and how they communicate, I think that's really what, what life is all about. So, yeah. So to make words a, a, word a, a better place, for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. If we teach that very early age, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Can I have another question for you? Wow. Next question. Um, 
What is your favorite place in the entire world and why? Um, well, it would be definitely my home city of Liverpool, as I've mentioned before. Um, I travel a lot around the world, or I usually do before the pandemic. Um, <laughs> so I've visited many amazing cities, countries. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, home is always where I can really come back down to earth and back to reality. So yeah, for sure, I still maintain Liverpool as the best place for me. Very good. Um, and who is your biggest idol in dance, in the um, ballroom dancer? Uh, well, for me, um, it doesn't just depend on dancing talent or ability, but also for me a lot is to do with mentality and how you approach any competition in any sport or it really in any business. Um, so I, my biggest inspiration was always uh, David Beckham when I grew up. He was like the superstar. Oh, wow. Um, but for me, um, you know, I, I heard that when he used to train with the team, he always would stay behind later than everybody else to practice his free kicks, practice his corners. And that really stuck with me because if you are willing to go to the extra mile, you, you will be successful. There is no doubt about that. So yeah, David Beckham was my inspiration as I grew up. Um, and of course, I appreciate many dancers um, for their abilities, technical abilities, but yeah, he for me is the one. <laughs> All right, cool. Next question for you. Um, in your back, can I see? Is your trophies about trophies about behind? There are a few. We have most of them somewhere else in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Which one you, you you would point like? Okay, this is my special one. That's the forgettable. There is anyone that you say? Okay, this is what my special one. Uh, well, I have a confession to make <laughs> because uh -oh. um, our national championships that we we win. Um, is actually in a very quite small box um, and it's actually in the attic of our house. Oh my god, that's beautiful, that's nice. Yes, it's just kind of hidden away safely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it doesn't, it's not very often that we put a trophy on the mantelpiece or something like this. Usually the most expensive ones are like hidden away. Good, very good. <laughs> good point. <laughs> right, what's the biggest difference between you and your best friends? Um, I would say it is my determination and um, if I was kind of to describe myself in, in one word or something it would be relentless um, because I just don't stop until I get what I want <laughs> um, and yeah I, I think for me I, I don't just settle for something that's okay I, I really go for what is the ultimate prize. Okay, cool. <laughs> Another question for you, Kylie. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Kylie, when you have when you go for the competitions, um, how long is the, the whole uh, process of it? Until you leave the hotel, you're going to get there. How long the whole thing until the end of the well, um, it, it does depend, of course, on the on the competition itself, because um, actually with our Grand Slams, um, if you are a certain rank, um, you actually don't dance the first rounds of the competition mm -hmm. and you come in later. So, um, but even then, it, it can be a very long, long day. Um, but I think the girls have it a lot harder than the boys do, because for them to do their hairstyles, their makeup, Oh, it see. takes really a long time, so it's very common for a girl to be awake at 4 a.m. to start preparing and of course then if you make all of the rounds and make it to the final and the results, you probably will finish at 12 or 1 a.m. the next oh. day. So, Oh wow, it's long. It can be a long day. When we actually dance, the, the um, each dance is around one and a half to two minutes long. Um, and we have five dancers which we perform. So the rounds themselves are like 20 minutes maybe, 
but then you have like one hour break and then another round, one hour break. So it's a very long day to, to stay kind of mentally uh, fit, you know? I see. And you need to, when you said you have five different dance, a different style, different choreography, everything. Yeah, different routines. Um, each dance has its own characteristic and its own unique history. Um, so there are 10 dancers altogether. There are five ballroom and five Latin American. We, we compete now only in the ballroom section. Um, so yeah, each dance is, is unique. It has its own choreography, its own style. Um, and you need to kind of show this in the best possible way. Which one is your favorite style? For me, uh, in the ballroom, it would be the tango is the is the main one because I like the passion and the you know the, the desire. The that they have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And there, there's if you are, I'm sure Argentina, they they, they might be as well. They the one of the categories as well on ballroom, the Argentinians. Uh, the Argentine tango is um, we have taken some elements from this and okay. redefined it in a in a different way. Um, but yeah, a lot of the figures are kind of recognizable yes nice. okay cool next question is um are you a cat or a dog person and if you could be an animal which animal would be and why mm. I, i mean for me i love really all animals uh, equally um sometimes more so than humans <laughs> I, th i think animals look after this planet a lot better than we do beautifully yes that's yeah true. No, I couldn't decide which one is better, but to be an animal, um, I think it would be very cool to fly. Okay. So uh, I guess something like an eagle would be really cool. All right. Do you have cats or dogs? Now with our lifestyle, it's very difficult. Um, but for sure, when I retire, I will, I will be surrounded by animals. <laughs> Great, Kali. Let's go another world. say about retire there's like a certain age um, that's mostly a dancer they retire or it can depend yes. um, I would say the average age is around 40 okay but um, it really depends on on your achievements and yes. um, especially a game for the the lady dancers it's quite difficult if they want to have a family oh yes you know to have children um, so therefore sometimes they retire younger um, and some couples actually have a child earlier in their career, uh -huh. recover, and then come back and compete and finish the rest of their career. Um, yes. But of course, you, it's not guaranteed that you can sure. recover in this way. So, yes, it's not easy. Um, but if you are, a, let's say, a pure competitor, then it's around 40 when you retire these days. Okay. Next question is, um... Who do you talk to, to the most? Um, I am a very sociable person in general, so I, I generally have a lot of uh, con constant conversations happening on social media or whatever. So, um, but uh, I mean, I guess naturally my, my dance partner would be who I <laughs> communicate with the most um, because we spend every day together. Right. But, um, you know, I, I have my best friends who I write to any time and things like this, but yeah, in general, I just like to communicate. That's why this this show is uh, perfect for me. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, how did you? How did your part, dance partner came across? Came along to you? Was someone introduced you? How did it work? Uh, one of our mutual coaches, uh, an Italian guy, he um, introduced us to each other, and he said, "I think this could work." Um, we both didn't have partners at the time. Um, so yeah we we had like it's called a tryout you you come together you have a dance yeah. together um to see how everything fits and i have to say immediately we we both felt after the first day very very good together um and then because my parents here we have our own dance studio um isabella my partner decided it would be better to mainly live here and then we can train whenever we want Amazing, but all the, the championship, it needs to be. It can be different nationalities. Can be mixed as well or not? When you have the yes, yes. Um, if if dancing was in the Olympics, then the the couple would need to be from the same country. Uh, uh -huh. But in in the competitions we have, it can be from any any country mixed. 
I see. Okay. Kylie, I have three questions left for you. I'm ready. <laughs> Do it. Did you ever had an accident uh, during the performance? Many, many accidents for sure. <laughs> oh. um, I mean, between me and my partners, we've had elbows in the nose, mm -hmm. uh, in the cheek. Um, when we have to do sort of fast head movements, occasionally the heads have come, you know, <laughs> close together. Um, it's very common to, you know, kick each other and things like this. So, yes, it's, it's all part of the job. Absolutely. Right. Um, what is one movie you could watch over and over again? Ooh. Well, uh, my favorite movie of all time is definitely Gladiator. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, oh amazing movie. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this I can for sure watch anytime from any part in the movie and yeah, yeah. And when was the last time you watched it? It was on about uh, four nights ago <laughs> on the television actually. So I, I just watched the, the last little scene when they're fighting at the end, so. Amazing, uh, amazing. Right, two questions left, let's do it. Another question for you. Do you have an ability that you think no one has or you never met before? Uh, besides dancing, besides dancing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I don't think really anyone has an ability that nobody else has. I think it's how you decide to approach anything that you do. Um, you know, if you have that determination. Um, for me, one of the the biggest moment when I, I really realized that was after Usain Bolt broke the world record because then I was reading about him and I just assumed he was superhuman but then I found out that actually when he first did the 100 meters it was like 10 seconds and something or 11 seconds even and he worked hard and broke the world record so that just proves that if you have that determination and the technique and whatever for me, you can do these superhuman things. Absolutely. Right, Kylie, ready for the last one? I am, yes. Let's do it. One more dance. <laughs> I wish I could pay louder the music. <laughs> okay, Kylie, next question is, um, what's the most difficult thing have you ever done? Well, um, it's not really easy to answer, I suppose. Um, because, uh, I, yeah, I guess each day has its own challenges. And with my dancing, you know, it's like a, a constant challenge. So in that respect, each day is just as difficult as, as the previous one. Um, but I think going back to your one of your first questions about the, the lowest point in my life, I think to be able to carry on competing the way I did during that time, for me that was the biggest challenge and the biggest kind of uphill battle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, although it was something that I do, I was I had an extra thing against me, shall we say. I see. When, when you look back of the situation that went through um, back um, in your life, do you do you already see the message out of it? Do you already see the positive side of it? Like the, the lesson that you learned out of it? I, I definitely learned a lot from it, yes. And I think mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. If you don't learn from these experiences, then it, it's a waste. Uh, so, yeah, um, yeah. you know, you, you should be happy that it's happened rather yeah. than sad that it's stopped. That's true. I was about to say that, that uh, those downtime in life, when you are going through that, you don't realize how uh, much you're going to learn out of it and in the future you're going to look back and you go like, I'm grateful that that happened and understand yeah. why it happened. Definitely. But I know when you are in there, it's just, you are blind, don't see anything, yeah. you just go through, through, like, try yeah. to find reason. And anyway, life, that's why it makes it that very, uh, very interesting. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, Kylie, it's not the end of the game yet, okay? So now let's play the quick 
thinking game. So I'm going to give away some words and you just tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay, interesting. I'm sure gonna, I'm sure gonna be easy because it's a very easy answer question, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start with religion. Religion, God. Okay, love. Uh, hate. Money. Uh, greed. Family. Love. Sex. Uh, passion. Life. Difficult. Politics. Um, useless. <laughs> Fear. Fear. Um, I would say like it drives you, it fuel. Yeah. Friendship. Friendship. Um, important. Desire. Desire. Achievement. Regrets. You shouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Wish. Wish. Um, work hard. Very good. The two last one now. So let's say first, Liverpool. One word. Home. And the last one, dancer. Dancer. Um, enjoyment. Oh, very good. Right, now let's pretend now I'm going to meet your dance partner and I'm going to ask your dance partner, tell me the most beautiful thing about Kylie and tell me something that you think he needs to improve on. What do you think your partner, dance partner will tell? If I'm supposed to be my dance partner, we will be here a long, long time if she's telling me my problems. <laughs> uh, but no, I would say Kyle would be uh, very determined, and this is for sure his number one um, merit, if you like, his, his number one positive thing, um, that he's determined to achieve the goal. Um, but the downside is that he can be very, very stubborn, and um, because he's so determined to achieve, he thinks his own way is the correct way. <laughs> <laughs> We all think that. We all have this, this point of view. Yes. <laughs> right, so now let's play now. Kylie in the magic box and you can ask me a question, okay? Right, Kylie, now you can ask me a question. I was thinking about this very hard and I, I had two uh, kind of ideas, but I will go for the, this particular one. Uh, and it's a two-part question. What for you is the worst thing about society in general now? And what would you do or what do you think we can all do to make society and the world better? Right, so the first part of the question would be, um, I think society, they have such um, a closed mind. And I think that it's so powerful the way they, they express themselves that sometimes we think we are wrong. Do you know what I mean? So I think if I could actually, if I would have a superpower, I would put this, this, uh, like a like a little medicine there, saying, okay, just open your mind. It doesn't matter if you don't agree or if you don't believe. If, if, if it's different for you, I think society would see the world more open and more approachable. I think the world would be a better place. That's for sure. I think it's society. It's it's as I, as I told you before. It's so powerful that sometimes it's so hard for you even to trust you or to believe in yourself yeah. or to, to see that you're right you yeah. know that you are you know you are you're normal you're not different or whatever so i think it's so powerful and the second part is what we could change we could do to yeah. change yeah very good question i think what we can do it's um stand up for ourselves stand up always for ourselves and uh, try to um to understand that um, it's, as I said, as I mentioned, that it's very powerful, but we can somehow, if we get all together, and if you are there, not fight the same way as well, like be, you know, against, because it's not gonna take them, not gonna pass your message. So try to understand the other side, the society, the way they are, and try to implement, your, you know, your point, your point of view in a very soft way, on a very understanding way as well. So I think if we do, if everyone do that in a soft way, let's say, of course, sometimes you need to, you know, stand up and be, you know, something yeah. there, okay, some, I understand that, I understand, yeah. it's, valid, it's, it's valid as well, I believe. Yeah. But if you, if you kind of use your power, or at least a little bit, if everyone use a little bit of our, you know, way of, of open up or showing, you know, our point of view in a soft way, in an understanding way, I think they would get the message somehow, I yeah. think, you know what I mean, the, the point. But sometimes, as well, we need this shaky yeah. role. Like. <laughs> Sometimes the only way, but I think if you, if, if every person would go in a soft way and yeah. trying to implement in a very soft, understanding way as well, I think they would get the message somehow. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah.
Yeah. Good, good answer? Yes, very good answer. Very good. 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 Kylie, look, first of all, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. My God, when I, uh, I've been, I've been um, approaching uh, people online the same way as approached you, and when I was looking at your profile, I was like, you're not going to reply to me for sure. You're not going to reply. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, when you replied, I can see such an approachable person, very interesting person, my God. And uh, it's just like, it's an honor for me to, to have someone in this show. I just started out my channel. And um, yeah. yes, my God, it's just an a honor, a pleasure to have you here. And um, amazing. thank it's you. Been, it's an amazing initiative, what you're doing. And I think this is what it's all about, to, to really communicate with the world and just understand people a little bit better. Totally. I think when I started out this, this channel, the, the, the main thing of the channel is just communicate with people, just yeah. to, you know, to interact with people and see that people out there, there are different opinions, different point of views, you yeah. know? It's, it's, it's about connecting with people yeah. as well. It's the whole idea of the show. Yeah. I just, I, I'm just like uh, very happy that um, we had this, this, uh, this interview together. Me and too. Um, before you go, if you don't mind to share a positive quote, a positive message, something that inspires you in life, yeah, I mean, what we've actually just been discussing, like for me, I think just approach people, um, you know, don't shut yourselves off um, and just speak to the people in your little bubble, you like really expand your bubble. That's that's definitely the message I would give to people and just just communicate because we're all humans at the end of the day. That's it. We're just one species together and um, yeah, I think just communicate and, and work together and live together and be happy together. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And Perfect. Kylie, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you William. Pleasure. Really great. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.